Hi there. My name is Basani on a call, whichever one you prefer. And if you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. As you can already tell by the title of this video, today is going to be a video on how to pass my trick with distinctions. And I have 10 tips on how to do that. Make sure to watch the video, watch the video from start to finish so that you can benefit from the advice that I'm going to give you because I can guarantee you that it's very good advice and yeah, enjoy the video. So I matriculated in 2022 so that was like two years ago um yeah it was like two years ago so i graduated oh, i finished high school and i finished high school with quite good marks you know and some of the tips that i'm going to be sharing with you guys are some of the things that helped me get really good grades you know even for my finals i had two distinctions one for lo one for english um but the rest of my other subjects i missed my distinctions by like a few marks maybe by like three percent by four percent so I guarantee you that you can trust me. And throughout my entire matric year, I had a very consistent, good average, you know, for the rest of the for the rest of the year, you know. And even in my finals, I still had very good grades. So these are some of the tips that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys on how to get good marks towards your finals, right? So the first thing that I have here is setting clear goals and writing them down, right? So obviously as a matriculant you have a certain amount of subjects right so it's very important that you write each and every single subject down and say that at the end of the year this is how much i want to achieve for the subject so we say i want to achieve 95 percent from it i want to achieve 80 percent so now when you've written these things down you see what you are working towards you see the amount of effort that you need to put because if you're currently on 60 percent you know that you have to increase your work ethic so you can get 20 percent more in the exam right so the first tip is set clear goals and write them down in my entire matric year i would write down every single term how much i wanted for a certain subjects and i would always get it if i didn't get it i would miss it by two percent or three percent so it's very important that you write your goals down and they will help you into knowing what you're working for right is create a study timetable i didn't really have a study timetable in high school i wish i did but i didn't i was just freestyling most of the time but now that i'm a university student i see the importance of having a study timetable because you need to prioritize certain subjects more than other subjects because you might find that other subjects are harder and other subjects are not as equally as hard so it's very important that you Create a study timetable that is going to work in your favor. A study timetable that's going to help you improve where you lack. I'm going to make a YouTube video about how to create a study timetable in the next video. So stay tuned for that. So in your study timetable, you should include study sessions, revision sessions, practicing exams, and having a break time. Like I said, I'm going to create another video where I'm going to go into detail more about this one. But it's very important for you to make a study timetable. If you don't know how to make a study timetable, I'm gonna make a video so make sure you watch that video so you do not miss out the third thing that i have after a test sit down and analyze where you went wrong so you can improve this is very very important guys when you fail a test it can be very devastating trust me but it's very important for you to take that failure and use it to your benefit right because if you failed it does not mean you're stupid it just simply means that you do not understand certain concepts so this is your opportunity to improve where you unfortunately lack right so whenever you get um test packs or exam back go home sit down and analyze where you went wrong right for example with me when i was in matric i used to misread questions like i wouldn't i wouldn't take the time to read i would just go through everything and then i would be so angry i'm like ma'am why did i get this wrong and, and then she would show me she's like did you read the question and i would actually be like wait i didn't read the question so every time i would write and i would misread a question i wrote it down that okay don't forget to read your question so when i got to my finals i sat down and i actually read through you see that 15 minute reading period that they give you in matric use that as an opportunity to read the questions properly like actually take the time to read them make sure that you because in that moment you have a lot of adrenaline rushing through you you're trying to bring back the things that you spent the whole entire night studying so in that moment when they say 15 minutes reading time take that 15 minutes reading time and read 
read the question so that you do not misread anything you know so that's why it's very important for you to after failing tests go back home and see where was the problem what did you miss it's gonna help you trust me when i tell you this okay and then the fourth thing is understanding your exam formats practicing past papers there was this girl that i used to watch on youtube but while I was in matrix, she would say, past papers, past papers, past papers. And I honestly couldn't agree more, guys. One thing about being matrix is matrix is very easy. Trust me, coming from someone who finished it, and I'm pretty sure most of you guys, when you finish matrix, you're going to say matrix was so easy. You just have to crack the code. You just have to crack how to get through matrix, okay? Past papers. The reality of it is that they are not going to suddenly change the way they ask questions. They are not going to suddenly develop a new formula. The same past papers they've been using for years and years and years. Trust me, guys. When I tell you, when I was in my metric, I downloaded this app called Past Papers S8. It looks something like this. I'm also going to link the app down in the description below for you guys. So I use that app. So that app has past papers from 2011 until the previous metric year, right? So when I was in 2022, they had past papers for 2021. Those were the last past papers. And when I tell you that they recycle questions, they ask the same thing every single year, but they just ask it in different formats. Like, how can you be a matriculant and not be getting distinctions when you have past papers by your side? They will help you understand how the questions are set up. They will help you understand where the mark allocation comes from. And they will help you with time management as well as practicing to get comfortable with the format you know so question type you get to see the types of questions they ask and how they ask them so that even when you study as a person you don't waste your time studying things that are unimportant you know that in the past papers i remember that they didn't care about this xyz information they only wanted this information and this information only the mark allocation you know that certain questions have certain mark allocations for example so i did agriculture right so in agriculture they would ask you explain peristalsis right for two marks right as a person you can explain and explain and explain but if you do not have certain keywords that they are looking for you're gonna get the whole entire question wrong maybe they might give you a half to feel sorry for you but at the end of the year it's not gonna be your teacher who's gonna be marking it's some random person so it's very important that you look at the past papers because they're gonna help you mark allocation you know that okay for two marks i have to say this word and this word do you get what i mean and then time management when i was in matric one thing that helped me a lot was setting time for myself right so i would study right i would study and say okay this week okay this today i'm dedicating myself to doing english paper one right so english paper one would probably be three hours i'm not sure i can't remember probably three hours right so you have three hours by your side fine so now treat that past paper as if you're writing a real exam set three hours sit there and do the work right and when i say do past papers i don't mean look at the past paper look at your, like look at your answer look at the answer look at the past paper that's not what i mean i mean actually sitting down with the question paper here take your time to write and answer the questions and then once you're done answering mark yourself according to the way that the marker would mark it right if it's not in the memo, do not even give yourself this because the reality of it is it's not going to be your teacher who's going to be marking the paper. It's going to be some random person who you don't know, who doesn't know you. They are marking accordingly to the memo, right? So it's very important. It's going to help you guys. Past papers are the only way that you can get distinction. There are other ways, yes, but past papers is 80% the reason why you most likely get distinctions because you will see that Nothing really changes. They're going to ask you the same thing they ask you. The fifth thing is focusing on your areas of weaknesses, right? So at this point in time, you still have quite a lot of time before you write your final exams. So in this moment, it's very important for you to identify what are the things that you are lacking in, like you lack understanding in. You know? So look at those things that you are not good at and practice them more. Spend time on them and not to say neglect the other areas because, you know, as the human beings, our brain works very funny. Once you stop doing something, you'll forget about it, you know. But if you constantly practice, set time aside. Let's say you say, okay, I want to give myself three hours to study, right? Let's say you're studying algebra and ah, geometry. Okay, I was very good with geometry when I was still doing pure maths. I was very, very good with geometry. I understood it like 
I could do it like with my eyes closed, right? But algebra was my weakness, right? So let's just say you want to study for algebra and geometry, right? Now say, okay, I have three hours on my side. I'm very good with geometry, but I'm not so good with algebra. Let me take two hours to focus on algebra. And let me just have one hour. So do that every single day. Make sure you prioritize your weaknesses, but also don't neglect the other things. So you are making sure that you give yourself enough time to understand what you don't understand in algebra, but also continue to increase your knowledge in geometry. Right? So the sixth thing is use active learning techniques, right? So there are different active learning techniques. So you might as well just subscribe to my channel and also click on the notification bell button. So when I do release these videos, you can be up to date. One of the things that helped me in my metric was active learning vocabulary learning right so what i would do i would pace around the room explaining the information to myself you know, you know pacing around means like walking around so literally i would have my book here let's just pretend this is a book i would have my book and walk around okay peristalsis is the process of okay rumination is that i would walk around with the book and explaining the information to myself another thing that helped me a lot in my metric was explaining the work as if you were explaining it to someone who does not have a cooking clue about what it is that you're talking about right so if someone were to say to me okay explain to me what is a flower right you explain it to that person the way you taught you first teach it to yourself like okay a flower is something that has petals it's something that has leaves and while you are doing this make sure that you also check in with your textbook to see that you are also using the formats that the textbook wants because remember at the end of the year it's not going to be your teacher marking it's going to be someone who's marking according to the memo so you need to make sure that everything that you are saying to yourself are things that are also in the memo remember we spoke about past papers just before this so you need to make sure that it's everything that's correct in the textbook you're not just saying it's yes it's very important for you to explain it in a way that you understand for yourself but also don't neglect the fact that you need to have certain keywords, right? I hope I'm making sense, you know? So like I said, one thing that worked for me was to have my book here, explaining it to my sense. Then when you're done, look at your textbook and check. Oh, okay, I got it right. Active learning. There are different ways of active learning. Like I said, I'm going to make a video on the different active learning techniques that can help you improve. So the seventh one is ask for help whenever you feel lost, you know? Our teachers are there not only to educate us, but to help us. So when you don't understand something, don't feel ashamed. There's nothing wrong with not understanding. It does not mean that you are stupid. It does not mean that you are dumb. It just shows that you care about your work. The fact that you are frustrated by the fact that you don't understand something shows that you really care about your work, you know. So ask for help from your teachers. They are there to help you. If you go for extra classes, ask your teachers from extra class. Do not be embarrassed about not understanding, guys. I think that's something that a lot of matriculants fail to understand is there is nothing wrong with not understanding something. It is okay. Do not feel ashamed. You are human, okay? You can even ask me. You can send me an email and I'll be willing to help. No, actually, I won't because <laughs> I'm done with matric. I left matric in my past <laughs> don't ask me questions about subjects you can ask me about agriculture you can ask me about life science you can ask me about so you can ask me about any of those subjects but the rest of them do not ask me don't try me okay so you can ask for help from anybody honestly the eighth thing here is staying organized it's very important for you to stay organized you know um when you're organized like your brain works properly because imagine trying to study in a place that is clustered full of things it's going to be so difficult for you as a person to focus because you're looking at that cup. You're like, that cup is irritating me. Why didn't that person wash the cup, you know? So make sure that your space is clean so that your brain can focus on your books and only your books only, right? Anyways, number nine is staying motivated. Um, It's very important for you to have something that keeps motivating you, you know, because we are human beings you know sometimes you get burnt out you know but it's very important for you to remember what you are working towards when i was in matric i remember how the only thing on my mind was finishing and going to university finishing and going to university that was my only goal guys i just wanted to finish and go to university if you sometimes struggle with motivation what i can suggest you can do is create a vision board you say i am graduating matric remember we said you have to get goals so 
Your goals should be your motivation. 90% for pure math should be your motivation. 100% for life science should be your motivation. You know, maybe you have a picture of University of Cape Town. That should be your motivation. Keep things around you that are going to help you stay motivated. Keep friends around you that are going to help you stay motivated, you know. And then the last thing here is taking care of yourself. It's make sure that you are eating right. Make sure that you get good exercise. Make sure that you are taking care of your mental health. Make sure that you're taking care of your physical health. Because without your body, you can't do anything. Without taking care of yourself, you can't do anything. There's nothing that you can do if you are not in a good state. If you're feeling sick, you won't be able to write exams. You don't want to be that person that's going to be eating junk food, junk food. And then when it's your matric, you're in a hospital bed, sick and vomiting because you didn't take care of your body. Eat right, exercise, drink enough water. And also put in God first, you know. Trust God, trust God with everything and make sure that you put him above everything. Make sure that you pray, you know. If you know that you want something, tell God that you want it. And say, God, I want this. This is what I want. And I need you to help me get to this thing that I want, you know. God will never forsaken you and he will never abandon you. He loves you and he favorites you more than anything in the world, you know. God loves you and he wants you to prosper and succeed. We've come to the end of this video. I'm very excited for you as a matriculant finishing your matric year. You know, matric is a very amazing year, you know. Just don't take it too personal, you know. Um, don't take it too personal in the sense that don't neglect yourself to have fun, you know. As much as it's a very serious year, don't forget to prioritize yourself and the things that make you happy, you know. If you enjoy doing certain things, continue enjoying them, but making sure that you prioritize your books. And also, I forgot to add in the advice that use YouTube as a source. There's YouTube, there's these channels mindset. They have programs that are going to help you pass with distinctions. So use those programs. Go to YouTube and search. You know, YouTube has a lot of things. If you don't understand certain things, go on the internet on YouTube and search. Find a lot of people that are going to make videos on these things that are going to help you. So there's so many things out there. There are so many resources. I'm going to link a few things in my description below. I'm going to link websites on where you can find past papers i'm gonna link apps that you can find past papers places where you can find different things for different subjects i'm gonna do all those things things that helped me as a matriculant get good marks if you are a matriculant and you're watching my video you don't have an excuse to fail really you honestly don't have an excuse to fail i have equipped you with everything that you need the only thing that you need to do now is go into battle and fight okay so that is all for this video thank you so so much for watching i hope this advice helps you if you do like me as a person if you do like my youtube channel please do subscribe and keep an eye out for more videos like these i'm very excited for you as matriculants on your journey of finishing matric all the best may god be with you bye